On today's episode, how to design a really good hero for your website. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to the free web design course. So at this point, we've already talked about things like typography, layout, and a little basic of the software that's necessary. And so today I wanna to take this into actual practical web design and let's design together a good hero for the website. Before we jump into the softwares and the computer, let's talk about what makes a hero a good hero. So basically it comes down to passing the 15 seconds rule. So most visitors, something like 80 or 90 visitors of your website are actually going to leave within the first 15 seconds because either they don't understand where they are or this is just not for them. So it's crucial for the hero, which is the top section of our page to clearly answer some fundamental questions so that we don't lose people in these first 15 seconds. So here are the questions that you need to understand. First of all, what is this? Like, who are you? What website am I currently visiting? It sounds obvious, but you won't believe how many websites are lacking the clear signaling of what is the name of this website? Who am I visiting? Where am I right now? So that's the first section. Like, what? where am I? The second question is, what do you do? Like, what is this website that I landed on? Are you selling something? Are, is this a content website? What am I supposed to do here? Like, what is this? I don't wanna be confused. I wanna know what is the purpose of this website? And the third question that you need to answer is, what's in it for me? Like, why would I invest from my time to spend time on your website? I'm a busy person, just like everybody else online these days, and there's, I can visit millions gazillions other websites and you need to give me a good reason why I should stay in your website. So now when whenever we're going to design our hero, we need to keep these questions in mind in order for us to grab the attention of the people. Now, on the previous episode, we talked a little bit about wireframing. And in this example, let's start with a very simple wireframe for our hero. So it's going to be kind of a cliche, cliche of a hero where basically we have an image here. Um, by the way, I, I want to do like a simple example. So let's say it's going to be like skateboarding events website. So that's the hero that we're going to design for. So in my basic layout that I want to do here, I'm going to have an image of somebody skateboarding. I'm going to have a logo so people know where they are. We're going to have a clear you know, title that explains what this website is. And we're going to have a call to action so that people can actually take action and probably some basic navigation. So this is quite a very, very basic cliche layout for a hero, but let's get down with the basic. Let's make sure that the basics are good before we going into some more crazy fancy uh, designs of our layout. So I'm gonna be working here with Adobe XD and, uh, and a little bit of Photoshop. So let's get started with choosing the right image. Okay, so we talked about what kind of images you can work with. Let's say I'm limited to working with photography and because of this is a free example, I'm gonna limit myself to using Unsplash. So I went ahead and did a search for skate. Now, what am I actually looking for? So first of all, I know that I need a wide image, right? Because this is probably where I'm going to position it. I need the kind of subject, somebody with a skateboard around here. So I have enough kind of split space to put in the text around here. So, you know, I'm scrolling through the images. Probably this is not a good one. This is a busy background. It will be hard to put some text into it. This looks pretty cool, but again, I'm not gonna have some place to put the images. And uh, looking at here, I actually like this photo. And so I'm, I'm actually wanna work with this photo because I really like the gradient color. I like it that we have one subject here and here it's pretty clean. However, I'm probably going to need to change the layout a little bit. So let's grab this image and bring it into our Adobe XD here. Um, so first of all, it's, it's pretty big, which is good. Now, the thing is, if I just regularly put it here, and uh, so this is the person that we have. I don't want it to be, you know, it's good that I've marked up this way, this area, because you can see here, it, he's a little bit high, higher than what I wanted, and there's people here in the background where the text should be, so I should probably, I wanna have something like this. This would be an ideal layout for me, but as you can see, we're missing a little bit of the image, and this is probably where Edit in Photoshop is gonna come into play. Um, 
Again, I still use Photoshop a lot. I know a lot of people diss it these days. So I'm gonna do something pretty simple. I'm gonna recrop this image and I don't need this bottom thing here, but I do need <coughs> more of the sky. So let me add a little bit more of the sky. Now we, pr we pretty much have an easy life because this, this kind of area here is pretty seamless. So basically what I can do is I'm just gonna go and duplicate this. Command J will duplicate this area. So now I have it again. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and stretch it. So yeah, this looks pretty good. Now, if I would be like going into the detail, you know, when you zoom in a lot, you can see this is kind of like stretchy a little bit in the background. So if this was a real project, I might go ahead and do a little bit of, you know, Gaussian blur to blur things a bit. And we'll do another video on diving deeper into these kind of Photoshop filters and stuff like that um, so that you can master them as well. But now I've blurred it a little bit so you can't see it anymore. It looks pretty solid. Um, let's flatten the image again and let's save it and see how it looks with Adobe XD. All right, so now we can bring this back here and now it looks, now this is the layout that we want. Now we have a good space for our text and layout. So let's get started first with actually bringing in the logo. Now this is not a real example, so let me grab a logo here from Google Images. The secret is adding PNG here so that you can grab these transparent logos. Oh, they lied. How much I hate when they lie and it's actually not a PNG. Let's see if this is a real PNG, no. Is this a real PNG? man okay so let's just take this one and into photoshop and uh using the magic wand we're just gonna go and grab it this way okay so let's say this should be here and it looks decent i would say not sure it's a good color combination this red and blue but Let's assume this is okay for now. This is the logo. Now I have a problem here. This is a logo that's only an icon. Remember the first goal of the 15 second rule, we have to communicate who we are, like what's this company name? So you can't just use a logo which is an icon because people won't know like what's the name of the website. So let's see who's the brand that has this. This is Spitfire Wheels. So let's call this Spitfire Events, all right? Because we said this is an events company. So let's write here, Spit Fire Events, Spitfire Events. Let's say that's the name of the company. Let's choose like a different font for them. Um, let's choose something like, so I'm just going to be random here. The way that I like to pick my fonts is I open on Mac, you can see all your fonts here on this font book. Um, this would be good, Ale Pro, let's try and use this. Looks a little bit, looks skatey. So might be good um, for this. Let's see how this works. Ale Pro, let's make this bigger, 50. Spitfire event. Yeah, I think it looks fiery, uh, skatey. Um, now that we do have some kind of um, kerning issues, which I think the, the spacing between the letters are not good if you remember the, you know, the video we had on typography, but this is not a logo design. Right, we're gonna f we want to focus on the actual hero. So actually, maybe this should be a little bit smaller. Now let's go and copy that and use this font as well for our main our main headline. So the first thing I want to make sure is that I'm using a big type. Right, we want to create clear hierarchy. We want people to look here first. So maybe let's write something. Now remember, we need to explain what this website does and also why they should care. So let's write something like the best skating or best skateboard events in the world. So this is this this title what it does is it explains what this website is best skateboard events. Skateboard events is what we do but best in the world is probably why you should care about this. Now as you can see the default here we have a little bit of a big space between the lines. And because this is a very big title, we can actually tighten that up a little bit 
Yeah, this actually reads better at this point. Now let's bring in some kind of a, a second line that might explain better how they are different and maybe, again, why you should care. Now, I don't think that in small fonts or like in small type when we're getting this, we should keep using this font, this Ale Pro, because it's, it's really not that readable when it's coming down to smaller size fonts. So let's jump back into kind of like Helvetica or something that is a very basic readable font, all right? So here we are, let's write something like Spitfire. Spitfire is the longest running skate event globally, um, pulling, pulling in the best talent in the world to its events. So again, we're trying to create something here that will excite people who care about skateboarding or something like that. Um, let's turn this into a paragraph because one line is too long here. We're gonna make sure that it's more or less the same width as the, you know, as the, the title and we wanna make sure we don't have kind of a single, single word running here which is called orphan for typography and I think this can be Okay, this can be pretty decent. Um, again, you might be thinking, well, should I be writing these titles or not? And I usually, when I work with my clients because they are not sure how to structure their texts, I help them tell the story and I help them understand what they need to tell in each part. And again, in the hero section, we must explain very clearly why should people care and what we do in a very clear way. Now here we probably wanna maybe do kind of a call to action. Um, like, our latest events or something like this. So I'm gonna create kind of a button here. Now, one thing that I notice at this point is, wow, this red logo here is really contrasting and really pulling in a lot of attention. Okay, so maybe I would actually want this button to be red. It's actually, it looks pretty, you know, hardcore, which is not maybe a good thing um, for skating events. So let's pull it this way and let's actually give it like a, a big border, maybe this is too big, but this kind of looks extremey. It looks like the logo, um, and it's and it's pretty cool, I think. Um, when it comes to skateboarding website, of course, you know you style the button and elements based on you know the type of um, the type of brand that you're working with. So here we can put in something like uh, latest uh, even book an event maybe book event or get tickets, something like this. And here we can go with something a little bit bolder. Note that I also made the text all caps, which is, it helps show, it helps make it bolder and kind of more called to action. -y. Now what I have here at the moment is a problem of hierarchy because these ones are both trying to grab my attention. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I wanna reduce the, I wanna reduce the hierarchy of this logo. I don't want the logo to grab so much attention. So maybe what I would do actually is I would go here. Um, of course, usually you would work with a logo that's vector, vectory. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and, you know, remove this kind of red thing. Um, maybe fill it in with, with white. Now I have a problem here because um, let me just do something else. So in Photoshop, what I can do is I can select a color range. So let me just select all the black, right? We'll dive into Photoshop more in the future, um, but then just duplicate the black. Now let's see what would happen if I would bring this in only the black outlines and not the color inside. Let's see how that would look. Um, so that looks obviously like it's grabbing way less attention right now. Um, and that's good because I want people to focus first on, you know, the title and then on the call to action and also on this person here. Also, I think we can make this person bigger, you know, so it would be more impactful, this person. So let me scale this image this way and I think it's a little bit more impactful right now when this person is actually a little bit bigger. Um, and the last thing that we're lacking here 
is probably some kind of, you know, some kind of uh, navigation. So maybe there's events, events, maybe there is about us, about, maybe there is a contact or something similar, contact, something similar like this. Make sure they are all aligned. Usually you'd want them to align with something like the logo. So let's align them all. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, let's align them. And also make sure that they have equal spacing so things will look good and place them right here on the side. And I think this looks decent. So let's wrap up what we did here. So first of all, we have a very clear hierarchy. First we see this, the headline, then we see this person, and then we have the uh, call to action. So we have a very clear hierarchy, one, two, three. We understand where we are because we have a very clear logo and a name of the website and why you should care about this and what do they do. And that's basically what makes a good hero section. Now, obviously this was very kind of cliche layout using stock images. Now you can take this to the next step, but first you wanna make sure that you master these basics before you go ahead and make more complicated hero section. I hope this was helpful. As always, make sure that you're subscribed and hitting that bell button because we have way more videos coming up in this free web design course to take you to the next level. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.